Welcome to another Old World Exploration. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the city of Omaha, Nebraska. And this uh, is a city that does not disappoint as far as Old World Exploration goes. So let's start with a little bit of information on Omaha. And first of all, where is it? We're looking at dead center of the United States. And right on the border here close to the border with Iowa. We have Omaha, the largest city in Nebraska. Lincoln, not a, not a distant second. Uh, Lincoln, also no shortage of old world evidence. But in this video, let's look at Omaha. And a quick look at the population demographics. And you'll see as we take a peek over on the Wikipedia that there's not a lot going on until about this time period here, um, 1880. Um, We've got things like meat packing industries heating up. There's breweries, so very similar narratives to places that we've seen in the area. Um, uh, this spike here, 1880 to 1890, and then a bit of a dip we have, and then a sort of a gradual progression. So, Omaha, mid-sized city uh, in the states, uh, and fairly young as far as the historical narrative uh, tells us. And of course, the same story repeats itself, where we have the development era post Civil War. It's always the Civil War that sparks the growth um, in many of these states, uh, many of these towns in the states. Um, we have the religion um, kicking up with all the different denominations, always looking like an explanation um, for what what stood before this, as far as I'm concerned. Here you have the uh, the big four breweries. Storts, Krug, Willow Springs, Metz Breweries, um, and then the Big Four Packers. I'd say also the Big Four Meat Packers, Armour, Wilson, Kud, uh, He, and Swift. Um, and that explaining apparently the boom in, uh, in the city of Omaha. Let's have a look at Omaha. And of course as we roll through the photographs I want you to uh, keep in mind that we are dealing with a very young city at this point in time most of these photos and postcards coming from early 1900s, some late 1800s. And the same narrative repeats as it does in so many of the cities we look at on here on this channel. Um, evidence of a um, of a city, of, a, of an area that has been in existence for, for much longer than we are being uh, told. Of course the information at the time in the hands of the authority, authoritative organizations, let's say, um, religions, government, um, secret societies, all these things. Keeping the lid on what we're looking at here, I think. Um, these types of buildings, really having no explanation for as to how they, uh, how they went up, and many of them disappearing. Um, from basically from history and only evidence left is what we can find in the form of a postcard or something like that. And again, you can look at these postcards and you can see the detail that goes on here. And it doesn't make sense. We are talking about a Midwestern small city um, where they get the, the means to do all this. It doesn't really add up. It's, it's a real Cowboys and Indians narrative. Um, if I type in 1800s Nebraska, this is what I get. And most of what I see, 1800s Nebraska search, um, I'm getting these sod houses, I'm getting the poverty-stricken feel on the on the wide open prairie. Um, every once in a while you get some shots of the city, but what is being portrayed to us for this time period looks more like this. And it really is disgusting when you think that people were living like this and, and this was going on in some of the major cities. And of course the narrative often looking quite comical when you see a sign like this, Industrial Chemical Supply Company. And this is the building. The screaming inherited as far as I'm concerned. Of course the streetcar um, narrative in full effect. And then you look at look at what we have going on here with these massive buildings with the high arches. Nothing new. Um, in our old world research, this comes up all the time. The domes on the corners. All right, you have this bumping out of a building. 
in Omaha, Nebraska, a young city. Do these look young? These buildings look young to you. A couple decades old. Mm, not to my eye. Of course, you get the mansions with the basement windows. So the excavation had to occur, ticking all the boxes as usual. Horse and buggy era, yet we have this. Standing tall and magnificent. And they have this interesting narrative too of the digging out and moving of some buildings too. So these photos are hard to, hard to sort of understand exactly what's going on here. Um, you can see there's some digging going on and you have the, the rail tracks here and then you'll see in another photo how they're digging and removing all this dirt and mud. I like this one as well. This really shows us um, what happened on the streets here. You have the old brick street and then you have a topping here. Probably an asphalt topping, looks like to me. Um, so basically a covering up of the old infrastructure. And you might say, okay, well, there's needed to spruce up. Maybe these roads are getting, they don't look actually like they're falling apart. They look like they're well-worn and um, well-made. Um, so I suggest we're looking at a covering up of the old world infrastructure. Another view of that main street. Um, if you look at this and you think this is something that was just thrown up within a couple of decades of this picture, I don't know what to say to you. Like, sure, I guess you want to believe what you're told, but it doesn't jive for me. It looks much older. And whatever happened to building simple structures? Especially in an early time period when um, what is it, meat packing and breweries and uh, uh, are there are your main industry and uh, you're really just trying to get on your feet as a city and you're building all this type of, well, who are the builders, right? The question that always remains. Well, I wouldn't say they're the builders, but uh, the founders. I found dead, was it found dead? I think so. And you'll see actually evidence of the digging out as we move forward here. Another mansion. Uh, the difficulty in building something like this, even in the modern day. Um, and then, I, of course, you turn the clock back 100, 130 years. Uh, it's just... Uh, the Deep Pockets narrative does not hold water. As far as I'm concerned, you say, oh, okay, these people were rich, they could do whatever they want. It still has to get built. So... The ability to do that type of work um, requires more of the narrative, not not just what we're told. And I mean, if you wanna if you wanna argue with me about um, what the historical societies say, the preservationist societies say, the academics say, um, my suggestion is that you are on a shaky footing with uh, the foundation of your knowledge, and. Uh, I think it's important to recognize that uh, these have been um, deceptive um, organizations, I guess you could say. Um, the intention is to misdirect and to deceive, I think, because we are, we have been sold a bill of goods, I think, on history, and we need, we need more of the story. So I'll bring you the visuals and you can muse on it all you want. I really appreciate some of the comments that come through on my channel here. Uh, people who have been to these cities, maybe grew up in these areas, and really provide a lot of color and flavor to uh, um, the videos that I, uh, I put out here on this channel. So I, I really do appreciate your comments, those of you that speak up. Um, say it loud. Say it proud. We're all interested to uh, hear what you have to say. So, I thank you for that. Does this make sense to you, Omaha? Arson buggy era. Yeah, we have uh, very castle-like buildings. Um, and of course, so many of these buildings, the B building, um, having no explanation as to how these were uh, put up. Here's an opera house. We've got muddy streets, which I suggest that we have a layer of mud here. And I would also suggest that here you can see the rail lines. Um, I think we have brick and rail lines under here, and we have a layer of mud 
maybe to ease the, ho the hoofs of the horses, <laughs> right? right? And then we have, of course, um, an opera house. Very, very beautiful, extravagant opera house. So, one of these things just don't belong here. Brandel's Department Store. And so many of these, like I would say, there's not much visual evidence. You get a sense of the detail here. Um, looking probably like heads or statues all along here, all along the length, but hard to tell. Not much left in these places. Here we have a brewery. And also uh, keep in mind the vertical. Why why were they building so vertically at the time? Um, when the, Whenever you add a floor, it adds to the difficulty of getting the job done. And you're living in an area where you have all this horizontal space, supposedly. Why build so vertically? Why? What do we have? A carpenter building? The, the burn hammer building? Why are you building these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stories tall? Why? Doesn't make sense. Simple logic. Here's a high school. Why do you build a high school that looks more like a, a federal building? Does that make sense? Just have to ask why. I know we weren't supposed to ask why in school. Ours is not to question why. Is it? Huh. Well, I'd like to. University building. Of course, all these having what we what look to be basement windows but uh, what we suggest in this research field of research many of these buildings going deeper found windows doors being found below ground um, more than meets the eye literally and figuratively the church is of course always always giving us what we want in this old world research Hotel Castle. Hmm. Fireproof. I love this fireproof narrative that pops up so much too in the old world. And the, um, explanation of these buildings. Okay, well, the explanation is there was a great fire, um, some disaster. The building original burned down, so they re rebuilt it and made it fireproof. That uh, narrative seems to repeat itself and uh, continue to pop up no matter where I look. Another high school. Still several stories tall, some arched windows, a castle, rich person's home, but a castle, a hospital, more hotels in the early time period here with the streetcars, um, again vertical, four or five stories tall, six stories tall. Hotels upon hotels, looking old, being torn down in that early time period, making very little sense. Oh, this shouldn't be in here. It's Dubuque. Saw this one already. I'll try to move fairly quickly. We've got quite a bit here. We're going to end on a World's Fair as well. Omaha having its own World's Fair, 1898, I believe. So they're calling this the new county court courthouse. You'll see the old county courthouse um, in this as well, and I'll show you the comparison. This actually gone to the dome for what they're calling the new county courthouse. They do this a lot too, old and new. They make it make us think this was built in a time period. I think all have, all a part of the region. I would suggest. I don't think they could build that at that time period. I just don't think they were able to. Not with the uh, knowledge that we we're told they had. Omaha Club. High school, of course, you gotta put one of these. Maybe it's the bell to tell the children it's time to come back in from uh, recess. Gotta have a gotta have a tower with a bell in it. Although the, a lot of the bells are removed from so many of these old world buildings and towers, and that's really a different video and a different story for another time. Um, part of erasing the old world is eliminating all the bells. Of course, the Omaha Auditorium, her horse and buggy. Do you do you see the juxtaposition here? Is there do you have any problem with this uh, this picture? Horse and buggies rolling up to a building like this? Was it wooden scaffold? You think if they had so much wooden scaffold to build of these, maybe they thought, wouldn't it be easier just to build our whole building out of wood? Yeah, narrative does not up. Let's 
So if you've been to the area or if you're from the area, please uh, um, don't hesitate to, uh, to chime in on the, on the comment thread. I've never been to these areas. I just find them very interesting. Um, and I would love to hear your input. And even if you're countering the narrative that I provide here, that's fine. I, I'd like to know your perspective on it and where you, how you come at that. Or, or are you just defending what, what uh, you've always known to be true? You're, you're casting that off now and uh, exploring it in detail. Here's the city hall in Omaha, Nebraska. Does that make sense to you? For the time period, for the demographics, that Lady Liberty? Looking, does that look new to you? This is a photograph, 100 year old photograph, no question. Uh, does this look like it was built within 40 years of the photograph being taken? Another another look at the um, replica of the Statue of Liberty on top. More to the story that meets the eye there as well, of course. That's the I think, inheritor's narrative, that, that whole Statue of Liberty and a lot of that goes along with it. Auditorium, this giving you a really good picture of the streets and the streetcars, tracks, and all of that. Um, a well established part of the narrative for the area. Here, this is a this is a good one I wanted to sort of stop on. They're grading the street. 1920 this is from and notice what they're doing here. Um, we have the, the level, the grade up here, and they're taking it down here. And what do we see at the bottom of the building here? Is that looking like windows to you? Below street level? There's some hard evidence for you. Old world building, looking like a cathedral, like so many of them do. Um, and then below ground, we have windows, doors. So, believe your eyes, folks. Believe your eyes, because this is what we're seeing. For where are the basic four wall gable roof structures that you expect to see for the time? Why are we looking at these multi storied? Um, this is the first national bank. Why, why are we looking at all this with all this detail on the outside? It's, it's comical. There it is, modern day. Um, do you ever see this type of detail now? I know the argument oh, it's my time and money, time and money. What, did they not have an issue for time and money back then? Was it not according to our narrative? Yeah, right. Grain exchange, of course. This is where you go to uh, exchange grain, exchange money. Um, really? Did it need to look like this? Did you need to arch these windows up here? Couldn't you have simplified? Couldn't it be a what, open auditorium style building? high school again yet again we've seen this one from another angle and postcard giving you a view of what's going on on the inside of course the big stack hill hotel vertically built vertical 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 keep it in mind not easy to do of course no visual evidence of this thing being built Typically in these towns, we get we get a little bit of a construction photo of maybe one or two of the major buildings, but we don't get much else. This one I thought interesting, a Hindu temple in Omaha. Um, interesting to say the least. Another hotel, Hotel Blackstone. Methodist Church. Be very mudded and flooded here. You can see the flow would have come down this way. There's the inside with the pipe organ. The pipe organ, of course, the healing of the organs, the cymatics in conjunction with this architecture of the old world. Um, this is before we have the current medical system that we have today with all its failings. Literally, literally and figuratively making me sick. <laughs> oh, there's a medical college, though. There's, This is where you go to learn the new uh, allopathic uh, style of medicine. Oh, 
I'm riding the line here with the YouTube sense of the Let's see. Yeah. Grandeur there. Again, mudded, right? Just just a faint hint. Something going on down below there. So not what I not what I think of as uh Omaha, uh, I had thought of. Now it's sort of commonplace. I know that this exists everywhere. This is the, the courthouse, the middle courthouse. Let's, let me show you the, the progression of courthouses here in Omaha. Okay, so the one we just looked at, supposedly built in uh, 1885. I have the names and the architects, of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, being replaced in 1912, we have this one going up. We saw this in a, in a postcard as well. We saw this postcard, um, and then the dome being replaced on that. Of course, we have the Civic Center today with its fantastic uh, hard 90 lines, brutalist architecture. Um, so this one apparently only lasting 20, 30. Does that look like it only lasted 20, 30 years? To me, that looks like it. wow. That's been standing for a couple hundred years, to my eye. I don't know. What do you think? You think this is a, was a temporary? Look at wait. This goes the infrastructure. Right, again, this I, I would I would be willing to bet you can walk right in there. And there's much more going on below ground. I love the chimney here. This is. I mean, it's a bit grainy, but you, you still get a sense for the brick detail in that chimney. Post office. You gotta have a post office with the clock tower. Hotel Fontenelle. Look at this place. I bet this was uh, quite the place to stay in its day. And of course, you have to have cathedrals like this in Omaha. More digging, 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 digging itself out of the mud. Hmm. Interesting, there's your steam shovel, doing a bit of work there. Another stockyards. Packing and the stockyards and the breweries. There's supposedly an explanation for what we're seeing here. So this is a fantastic photo. I've used this in other videos, but it really kind of shows us um, the contradiction, I think, in our historical narrative. Sorry about the dog in the background there. Astro, very Shriner esque, mosque esque. Check out the detail in the dome. Really, like, steam trains, um, all part of what I consider to be the old world. That whole steam train narrative. I've done videos on all the train stations, spectacular train stations throughout North America. Of course, these are all over the world, but uh, my focus is narrow because it's too too broad of a subject to try and grab the whole world. I probably will venture off continent with a bit more in some of my videos, but this is the Woodman of the World building they're showing us here. The demolition had to be had to be taken down. World Herald building. Everyone with their hats on back then. It really is detail spectacular. All right, now we get to the World's Fair. Last couple photos here. Um, let's take a look at this. Okay, and we're told here because of the success of Chicago's World Fair in 1893, community leaders in Omaha um, hold their own version of that historical event. So this uh, World's Fair, coming to be known as the Trans-Mississippi International Expo, 
um, running from June to October 31st, 1891. Um, I love this here. Um, majestic but temporary structures. I have to let you know that these things are temporary. Let's have a look at them. And the temporary structures are looking a lot like the permanent structures that weren't permanent because so many were torn down. All this temporary, I guess, building uh, waterworks, waterways. I love the swan boats. Really have a romantic vision of attending one of these world fairs and be, knowing what's actually going on. Of course, we get a depiction of blah, and then World Fair, temporary structures. Does, that, does this jive with what we're seeing uh, in all the photos that I've been showing you? Does that look temporary to you? We got a tree right up against the building, looking like, well, I don't know, churches, government buildings. This is all temporary, what is it, uh, staff? Last and stuff, plaster, whitewashed. And then, uh, of course, a resetting of the, the narrative as we suggest in this research. This is all temporary, really. Now, of course, all destroyed not long after. Not a very good photo there, sorry. I, of course, lit up at night, 1898. Building there. That's that's a fantastic photograph. Again, I remind you, 1898, um, early days of electricity, um, temporary buildings with um, all powered up with lights. Making sense to you? Temporary buildings, temporary flower pot holder, temporary railing. Mm hmm Do these guys really know what's going on here? Or are they shell-shocked? Temporary statue, chariot on top. All temporary. Reminding you, I'm here to remind you that this was temporary. And was torn down. And was not going to stand the test of time. It was only on display for six months. No, four months, sorry. So the World's Fair narrative is the really the uh, a trigger, um, a trigger storyline I think to get people really um, into researching this old world deception. It's a, it's a dead giveaway, and their their weak attempt at explaining all this away as temporary is just that weak. I like this photograph here. It's really sort of um, have the two pillars, and have the shadowy figure in the dark hat. Dark shadowy figure in a hat uh, lurking in the shadows. Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, so that is my file on Omaha. And if you were attending the YMCA at the time, you could, of course, go in here and have a coffee and uh, admire the uh, shiny uh, marble columns and the coffered ceilings with all the moldings. <laughs> so I thank you for joining me on this old world exploration of Omaha. I hope you enjoyed the photographs and the commentary. Um, take good care.